ABNC, America's Black News Channel. Watch 15 minutes. Share with everyone. Finally, news that speaks to us. A recent study found nearly 20 black colleges and universities have been underfunded by states for decades. According to Forbes, between 1987 and 2020, 18 HBCUs were underfunded by $8 billion, leaving them operating on thinner budget margins compared to predominantly white schools in the same state. Those schools received federal land grant funding, but were reportedly cheated out of billions, mostly by southern states. Schools receiving land grant funding require federal dollars to be matched by the state, but for decades, predominantly white institutions have gotten that money and more. Howard University professor Ravi Perry talked to my colleague Tashani Whitlow about how this affects the schools. Let's continue the conversation. We're going to bring in Dr. Ravi Perry. Uh, he's a department chair and professor of political science at Howard University. Dr. Perry, first let me just say thank you before we get into all this. It's a pleasure. I know you're a busy man, but are you surprised? You work at an HBCU. Are you surprised by this report? No, I'm not surprised with this report. I mean, I do work at Howard. It's a private HBCU, although we are funded via the federal appropriation uh, from Congress. Um, but, you know, I used to work at land-grant institutions uh, in Mississippi, for example, and I'm very familiar with the fact that the uh, public uh, HBCUs have been historically uh, um, not funded at the level, um, as was just indicated, uh, that they should be. Uh, and, and there's two main reasons for that. Uh, one, uh, that funding is supposed to be guaranteed by the state. And the state, uh, of course, is run by state elected officials, state representatives, state uh, senators. Uh, and in most cases, particularly in those southern states that we, you just mentioned, those uh, southern states are largely governed by conservative uh, Republicans. Uh, who have historically not sought to invest in black communities on a whole host of issues, education just being one of them. Uh, we've seen this narrative happen, though, successfully, where those uh, public HPCUs have fought back, like in the state of Maryland, where they fought back and they sued, and they uh, got uh, much of the redress of their wrongs uh, in some more recent funding in places like Morgan State, Bowie State, et cetera, in the state of Maryland. But we need to see this across the country, and particularly throughout the South, um, and we need to remind ourselves that these are state-funded dollars. And so the public HBCUs are owed every single dollar that the uh, predominantly white institutions are owed because they are all are the same and that they're land-grant public institutions that are funded by taxpayer dollars. Yeah, I mean, and they're doing good work, but to the tune of being underfunded by nearly $13 billion, but educating 80% of black judges, 50% of black lawyers and doctors, 25% of folks in STEM. I mean, is this part of a, a larger conversation, Dr. Perry? Well, I think what it shows is that, you know, that, that HBCUs have been very frugal and quite successful with limited funds. And so just imagine if, if, if we actually got the funds that we're owed, how much more success would we be able uh, to create? And to be clear, we're historically black, uh, colleges and universities. None of them are exclusively black. So we don't only serve the African-American community. This is an American story. This is an international story. Students from all over the world attend HBC HBCUs. And to not give those schools their proper funding is to rob each and every one of those students and their faculty members and the administrators with the tools and resources need to fully advance the progress that we're looking for, particularly in black communities, but really for all of those who are seeking higher education at an HBCU. See you. Yeah. Dr. Payne, the founder of the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, right? She just came right flat out and called it the highest level of sanctioned discrimination. I see you shaking your head. You agree? Oh, absolutely. Oh, it absolutely is a, a sanctioned discrimination. Why is it discrimination? Because again, these are public dollars. And so regardless of what color you are, if you live in a state, you pay taxes. Those taxes, a portion of them, are supposed to go back to your public state institutions, and it's supposed to be done on an equitable basis. And so to the extent that it has not been equitable, then that means that there is discrimination that's taken place. That's not a red herring. That's just p pointing out the absolute facts. And But it's up to us, those of us who live in these states, particularly in southern states, in places like South Carolina, for example, or or Mississippi, where you have 40% of the black population in these kinds of states. We have to rise up and make sure that we're paying attention to what's happening in our state legislatures. It's all politics, all state and local. 
for the most part. We need to remember that if we're not engaged in our state and local politics, these are the kinds of things that happen that circumscribe our own ability in black communities uh, to rise above the ashes. Dr. Perry, driving the message home. We appreciate your time, sir.